So let's look at this isolated specimen, okay? And again, to give you an idea of what we're looking at, okay? So what I want to show you is that, once again, this would be the um, a uterine tube. So here's the isthmus, right? Here is the, um, the ampulla, the infundibulum with the fimbriae. And this is the broad ligament here. Okay, so where we have the, um, the ovaries, so the ovaries are enmeshed in connective tissue. So where we have the ovaries attached are the ovarian ligaments, right? So we see an ovarian ligament right here. Here's my ovary. And at the distal portion, here is the suspensory ligament. And within the suspen suspensory ligament, we have the ovarian artery and vein. Okay, so remember, these are basically going to be suspending, the, or again, the ovaries from the, um, the pelvic wall. And these are the suspensory ligaments. Once again, here's the uterine tube, here is the ovary. Okay, it, it's a, quite a different perspective when you look at all the associated connective tissues, all right? Okay, so other, other details. I want to go back to, um, to looking at the underlying um, Now remember, what we just covered, okay, we looked at, we looked at really the female vulva. Okay, so the vulva is once again the external genitalia and all the, um, the labia have been removed. And now we are looking at the underlying tissue right here. So people, once again, this would be the clitoris and this is the, the body or the corpus of the clitoris. This is the glands or the tip of the clitoris and it is analogous to the penis. It's erectile tissue, it is corpus cavernosum. Now these are the legs so these would be identified as, like they are each identified as a cross. Collectively, we would identify them as crura, okay? So again, all corpus cavernosum. Now, here are our vestibular bulbs, okay? So again, the vestibular bulbs are like brackets, like parentheses, okay? On either side of the vagina. So here is the opening to the vagina, Okay, and here, again, I would describe it as being posterior to the clitoris would be the urethra. So here you get a very good look, view of the female urethra. It is significantly shorter than the male urethra, obviously. But again, you see that the urethra does not travel through any part of the clitoris, okay? So here is the clitoris posterior to that is the urethra, posterior to that is the, um, the vagina, okay? So just to give you a perspective, remember the vestibular bulbs that form a parenthesis on either side of the vaginal orifice, they are corpus spongiosum. So here are the vestibular bulbs. Now let's look at um, Let's look at an isolated uterus, okay? And once again, we've basically made a longitudinal cut in this structure. And this region is the cervix, right? We talked about the cervix. We talked about the fundus being the domed portion and then the body, okay? Which constitutes the vast majority of the uterus. And obviously this is the uterine cavity, right? Okay, so relative to the cervix. Obviously you can see it's, it's rather thick, it's several centimeters, okay, in length. And the initial opening into the cervical canal is the external os. Then we go down the cervical canal, which again, we would, we would harbor cervical mucus in this area. And then we have the internal os or opening. Opening into what? The uterine cavity, okay? So again, here is your um, cervical canal. And then I will show you another specimen that is helpful to identify these structures. 
So people, this is a uterus with the associated um, fallopian tubes, and this is a great view of the infundibulum and the fimbriae, okay? Those little finger-like projections. Now again, this is the uterus, and you can see that we can identify the cervix right here, and that is the um, external os, the opening. Now, this is part of the vaginal canal. And remember, the vaginal canal um, basically um, goes around, wraps around the sides of the cervix. So this would be the fornix. Okay, we talk about these fornices that exist. So the fornix is the space between the vaginal wall and the cervix. So this is the, the, the fornix, okay? So it gives you a perspective. And then finally we have, okay, an isolated vagina. So it is a, a muscular tube, muscular elastic tube, and you see the rugi or the folds. Okay, so again, this is that, that muscular elastic canal, which is the vagina. And remember, this would more or less um, wrap around, right, and anchor to the sides of the cervix. So vagina and, once again, uterus, and here's the cervix. And let's look at some isolated ovaries. So people, these are isolated ovaries. The surface is that harder outer covering, the tunica albuginea, okay? So that's what I'm pointing to. And I know these are ovaries isolated from a mature female, somebody who is um, beyond puberty, because they look bumpy. So these would be the developing follicles, okay? So you see the bumps, again, on the surface of the ovaries.